of some successful, powerful people. It's going to happen with your mouth. Glory to God. Somebody told me the other day, I believe it's Pastor Pinto going through hell on hot water. And she said to me, well, you know, Pastor, I know I'm not supposed to talk to the devil, but I had to say so. I said, well, you're not supposed to talk to who? That's who you're supposed to talk to. You better learn who you are and learn how to respond in faith. When that devil tries to convince you, you ain't nothing. You better fight for me. I don't know. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to be done in 10 minutes. You don't mind, do you? I'm going to be done in 10 minutes. You had better, Shonda, learn if you really walk into this journey. You had better learn how to open your mouth and quench the fiery darts of the devil that he put in your mind and tell you you ain't worth something and you ain't no good and nobody wants you and the world rejected you and you'll never do this and you'll never do that you better shut up you learn how to say devil you are a liar I am born and a monster to him and love me I am blessed with everything Watch this. If thou hast thought evil 
If you have an evil thought, listen to this. Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Shut up! Don't speak what you have put in your mind. You can't stop the thought from coming. But you don't have to say it. Because when you're speaking it, you're framing the environment. Am I teaching you right here? You, you know what? You know, you know, the sister say, hey man, I just got to give you a piece of my mind. I don't want a piece of your mind. Shut up! My mind messed up enough for the days. I'm struggling with my own mind. I don't need a piece of nobody else's mind. I can't even get my thoughts together now. I tell my wife, but that's just my opinion. I don't want your opinion right now. <laughs> I just had to tell you that. I think that was yesterday, the day before. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Oh, y'all can't stand no truth in hell. I want a whole opinion, but I said, let me ask you. I'm already catching hell, dealing with all this thing, the devil throwing. I don't need your opinion. Don't go on me with your opinion. And I'd be careful not to give you mine. Here's where we get in trouble. We don't understand that we become haughty. And all of us get to the point where, you know what, I'm just going to say what I feel like. I'm just going to say what I think. I'm talking to you, because I'm just going to say what I feel like. I'm just going to say what I think. Child, I'm going to get some statement up in here. Shut up! That's why all the fire up in your house. Shut up! That's why you're uncomfortable. Shut up! A word can be spoken as a picture of apples, of golden apples in a silver glass, the Bible says. Be careful with your words. Paul says, stay away from fool's destinies. Don't, don't jump around with words. I feel like preaching here, y'all. I feel like preaching. If I'm happy, I say amen. Good to see you, our leader. Somebody give God praise for our leader, amen. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. I don't know if you did it or not, but God, remember I told him, make sure I'm coming out of your mouth and you're healing. Mm -hmm. You see, see, listen, man. I didn't have hepatitis C. I didn't have chronic kidney disease. I didn't have a drug demon because I had more of my stuff was a drug addict, amen. But I spoke myself. Listen, any group of people together, Missouri, the reason why we are failing as people for the most part is that we have no agreement in words. That's true. Come on now. That's true. It's hard in the bedroom. Because you're all at the bag of chips. Mm -hmm. Come on now. But everything is mess. Better get out the bed. Yeah. That's true. Because we're not saying the right things. I receive from you this evening. I'm going to have somebody else for this. And I'm going to have you say amen. amen. You've got to understand now, your words are going to frame your life. Right, right. Come on now. That's what I like about David. Can I talk to you? I'm not going to preach it. Can we just talk? David, Bob, the God says in Acts chapter 22 about David, he's a man after my own heart. David was the biggest horn monger. The most lustful man in the whole Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Somebody say amen here. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you don't believe it, it's still the truth. But David was about to die when he got old. All his servants, you know what they do? Say, he looked like he's sick. You know what they did? Knowing, him, knowing that king? They went and got him a little young girl and put her in the bed with him. And when he didn't touch her, they said, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> he done, he done. If he didn't do nothing, he done. Shipman, who stole a man's wife, yes. killed another man for his wife, yes. was going to kill the king to get his wife back. Yes. This man, yes. God said, This is a man oh, after my own heart. Yes. We wouldn't even let him come preach in our churches. Yes. Girl, you got all those sweet house, you ain't coming up here to preach. Because we don't recognize it. Oh, Y'all better don't bother me up and then I'm going to preach it like it's true. Yes. You and I wouldn't even let Abraham come to our house. But we talk about Father Abraham, how many kids, how many kids have. But 
you know why David was a man after God's own heart? Read the book of Psalms. He was all about the word of God. Everything, all of my steps in your word and let your nick my nick to have no dominion on me. But the word is a lamp until my feet and a light under my path. And how can the young man cleanse his way? By taking hold unto your word. All David was interested in is the word of God. God says, I know he's a whoremonger. I know he's lustful. But he's after my heart because he believed my word. He's standing on my word. He's making my word a part of his life. He's living his life based in the spirit. All I know is that I'm